In my opinion, Ultra League is the best league out of the three in order to climb in Go Battle League and that's mainly because you can use anything that kinda makes sense and of course rely a lot on your skills to climb on that GBL. So I guess that Ultra League is the perfect format, so here is trainers a team that can work for you. Also I decided to make a video around Cobalion because this Pokemon doesn't see the spotlight of faction of Ultra League at least that often so I guess that making a team around it makes a lot of sense for a lot of you. Fair alligator up in front, double legendary at the back with a non grass -nut version of uh, Cresselia and over here we're just gonna keep going at it with our Moonblast. Able to destroy down the remaining HP that Mac is having and now before the farm is down we're gonna reach to another Moonblast to get that shield out of the way. We're looking at a very good uh, uh, spot for our Fair alligator because it can easily tank the move from Polyrath and still connect that Hydro Khan, but unfortunately for us on the wrong Pokemon, because they managed to catch here on the Trevenant, they absolutely knew what was coming into the game and now we need to reveal our Cobalion in action. So by blocking here we can get a guarantee that the next Stone Edge can connect for big damage, but because I was counting the moves I decided to go for some extra uh, double kicks, charge up a little bit more and over here I realized that perhaps my Cobalion might be the best Pokemon for me to destroy down our opponent. So second sword now will not connect but the second one is almost here. Polyrath now will throw the move, it is just the Ice Wind which means that this next second sword will absolutely deal the little damage that we need and of course grab this first victory to get the video going. Into the next battle now with a Charm user, Shadow One as well, so Granbull is gonna do so much work on our Pokemon but obviously we can grab some shields in the process with a few of our Hydro Cannons. But first I want to rely a little bit on the switch of my Cresselia and we managed to bait out a Greninja. This is still pretty good for us that even though they are a dark type with those Night Slashes we can still go ahead and push a lot with a simple Moonblast. You do not always need something like a Grass Knot and when you aggressively switch out to your Cresselia no one is gonna throw something like a Swamber up against you so I guess that you're gonna be just fine without grass Knot, but if you feel like you have to well just go for it be my guest I just think that in this meta future sight is gonna help you even more especially up against those fire types on the switch so now able to farm down with the double kicks they are also kinda shieldless here so this means that if we can get the upper hand with the hydro cannon at this point we can destroy them down but unfortunately for us we end up catching the move which was not intended at all and now with that Dragon Claw we're gonna go down. Of course we did some severe damage back at them with our Ice Beam but over here now Cobalion returning we can easily tank at least a move so I guess that the Stone Edge at this point might be absolutely clutch to farm them down. Now with only Granbull remaining another Stone Edge later we can grab yet another huge victory for our team in this Ultra League format into the next battle now with the Gaslord up in front, not the best lead ever and to be honest I hate this lead because my Shadow Claws are resisted, Ice Beam is never gonna be enough to destroy them down and obviously they can apply so much pressure with their moves. Hopefully though we got Cresselia with Moonblast which can absolutely destroy down that Gaslord and of course our Cobalion for the end game. So over here now we can go for those future sites on the Taloflame and this is why you might actually need to have future sight over Grassland on your Cresselia. Able to grab the shield with a pretty smart Moonblast I guess at this point and before we go down can we reach the another one? No we cannot. This is kind of a big bummer but at the same time we have so much energy to throw from our Fair Alligator so we're just gonna finish them off in return. At this point I know that perhaps we can tank the move and still reach the Ice Beam but at the same time I want to switch out to my Cobalion because I have two shields remaining and perhaps that energy that I have farmed up with my Fair Alligator might be kinda clutch for that ending part. So Stone Edge now is all we can throw up against Giratina so I guess that whatever they throw can also be taken and as it seems they do not even have a Ghost type move, instead they might 
might be running the usual Dragon Claw Ancient Power version of Giratina, so we can pretty much tank whatever they throw. Hopefully they get no boost on that Ancient Power and right after we got the Ice Beam which connects for a lot of damage. Now that we got two shields remaining, all we need to do here is to protect our Cobalion from further harm, even from those Dragon Claws, and we can go for back-to-back -back Secret Swords to grab a huge victory for our team. As it seems I'm getting a little bit too cocky over here, what am I doing? I'm surviving with minimal amount of HP, and sometimes, I don't know why I do this, but yeah, I get the extra risk. Oh, here is why, oh my goodness, I totally forgot about Giratina. That was a pretty cool surprise. Sometimes I also forget my battles, okay, and this is one exact incident of that happening. So yeah, that was crazy, right? Double Sacred Sword and the second one resisted as well by Giratina. Are you kidding me? That definitely deserves a like. Anyways, into the next one now with a Shadow Alola Sandslash and obviously here my uh, main aim is to go ahead and throw those uh, Hydro Cannons and get the early shield advantage, but as you can see we can get now to another Hydro Cannon and push for that second shield if they want to, otherwise we can get the switch advantage. But at this point I guess that we can easily farm down, get out of here with a decent amount of energy farmed up, so that means that whatever follows is still gonna get a lot of damage and that something is once again a Giratina, about 50% of damage on that bulky devilish Pokemon and we still got now the switch out on our Cresselia for a little bit of extra push with that Future Sight and this is why you enjoy using Future Sight on your Cresselia up against those fire types so they are kind of forced in using the remaining, eight, the remaining energy that they have and in the process I'm just gonna go for only one Psycho Cut before the damage from Incinerate is registered so that, that I can get the chance to reach to that extra Moonblast. However, this is not the case at all, but hopefully my Cobalion can still go into the battle. Unlike the previous Giratina user, this one has Shadow Sneak, but as you can see it is never gonna be enough, so my opponent just top left this battle. Into the next one now with the Cresselia up in front, obviously not the best lead ever, but the Shadow Color damage is still gonna add up over time, so I guess we can totally rely on it in combination with uh, uh, three of those Hydro Cannons. So by blocking the first Grass Knot we might be in a, in a pickled situation because still we need some extra push from our moves and I get the weird feeling that perhaps they're gonna block the next move and still reach to the knockout move. So able to get here now to the Hydro Cannon, just remember that they need 6 of those Psycho Cuts to get to the first uh, Grass Knot while we need only 5 so this means that uh, following up we are still gonna be able to outspeed at all times. So now with that match I'm getting into the, game, into the game, I guess that we can have the upper hand with the alignment, but at the very end, once again, a Giratina pops up. So many trainers are using Giratina, but at the same time, we can have a team pretty much built around beating down that Giratina threat. So even Cobalion, which doesn't do a lot with those fighting moves, can finish off Giratina if they do not have access to something like a Shadow Force, but because even a Shadow Sneak is never gonna be enough to finish you down. So Stone Edge time now, let's see how well we can do, because we can connect the move and now we got those Sacred Swords for that final Pokemon which returns into the game and that is Matcham. So I guess by blocking here just once we might be on a very good spot by completely farming down, down goes Matcham and of course now they stand no chance at all, so I guess that one Moonblast might actually do the trick over here. My opponent is not liking just left a battle I guess because Moonblast here is definitely gonna do all the work and down they go. Into the next battle now with a Giratina, this time up in front. Let's see how we can play this one towards our advantage because my opponent here is gonna get to the early move and the ancient power. No boost on their side, hopefully, and now we can go for those ice beams. The reason I did not throw that early my ice beam is because I could be too predictable for my opponent and I just want to wait a little bit extra since I know that the moves from Giratina are never gonna be enough 
enough to threaten it down to 0 HP. So following up now, we can win the CMP over the opposing Ferrari Gator, which is pretty much of a big deal since now they're almost at the 50% range. They switch out to the Red Steel and of course we can start pushing with those second swords and of course the double kicks. So Focus Blast now, we're just gonna block the move and still gonna keep going at it with our Sacred Swords. I am in no mood at all at switching out to my Cresselia because obviously I want to keep it for the end game over that Tefer Alligator. And right here we're just gonna keep going at it with more Sacred Swords. They need to start blocking because they're getting severely low. Another Sacred Sword on the shield and one more before even breathing with that Ferrari alligator. Down they go, they, they never stood a chance over there and we didn't even reveal our Cresselia. That was pretty much insane. Into the next battle now with Feraligator, this time on the mirror and this is the final battle of today's content. Feraligator is a Pokemon that you can always rely on, especially when your opponent is getting weak to it and as it seems the backline of theirs looks pretty similar to mine. So they also have Feraligator and the Cresselia, could they have as well a Cobalion or is this a different team structure? So Moonblast here is gonna be able to be absorbed by my my Pokemon and I'm just gonna return the favor with more Moonblast but my Sailor Moon here is definitely gonna have the upper hand as it seems on that HP scale because we can reach to the next move fairly faster. The third Pokemon is a Skeletor which is pretty bad news for my Cobalion but hopefully here they have totally messed up the alignment for them so that we can get the upper hand with our Hydro Cannons. Down goes the, the final shield of theirs, so all we need to do now is to protect our Feraligator from those Shadow Balls, but instead they throw Disarmed Voice. It doesn't matter at all, we can still reach to the Hydro Cannon by throwing at the perfect moment, and over here we can easily farm down in return with those Shadow Claws. Now with that opposing Feraligator returning into the game, I guess that all we need to do is to reach to a simple Hydro Cannon, switch out now to our Cobalion and they stand no chance at all because the Sacred Sword is imminent and of course this final Hydro Cannon will deal almost no damage to us at least on the full HP scale so down they go in the process with the Cresselia remaining at the back as well. So that is gonna be all for today trainers, thank you for watching for sticking around till the end, it really means a lot for my channel, before you go like the video, subscribe to my content and I hope to see you all into the next one.